Yellow Lima, brought to you by Good Food Restaurant, home of Happy Days, Beer Barrel, and Old City Prime. Also by Mercy Health Partners, 318 Restaurant and Bar, Lima Palette Company, and Fresh and Faded Hair Studio. Welcome to Hello Lima. It's a pleasure to be joined by the Honorable Justice Sharon Kennedy, 154th Justice of Ohio Supreme Court. Welcome, Justice. Well, thank you so much. I was reading something. I was kind of surprised that you're the only, the ninth woman elected to the Supreme Court, Justice. That is true. That is somewhat surprising, given that the courts have been around for almost 100 years. Is that a, a badge you wear with honor? And how do you get more women um, involved? Or how, how do, do, you, do you think that's going to change over time? I'm sure it is. I do think it changes over time as society grows and women find their role in courtrooms across Ohio or just obtaining a law degree and then wanting to run for political office. I might be the ninth woman at the Ohio Supreme Court, but I am surely not the last, as that now is, has joined the 10th and the 11th. That, that, that is, that's true. One of the things we like to do with Hello Lyman, and, and we talked a little bit before we came on air, is we like to kind of have a little bit of a dialogue. Sometimes the demographics, the, this audience is a little different. Sometimes they get a chance to see people in a different perspective, even people that they think they know, that they don't really know, or people that they get introduced for the first time. So I really appreciate that you've come on to this show and willing to take some of the questions that we have for you. Let me ask you this, Justice, when you talk about uh, going to your background as a former police officer, and I think a lot mm -hmm. of people don't know that, you were on the streets for four years in Cincinnati. So I was a police officer in the city of Hamilton, located in Butler County, and I was a uniformed officer about three and a half years and spent my last time at the department as a civilian assistant because I had started law school by then. But you've seen, you've walked the streets, you, you, get, a, you get a perspective on what's going on in today's environment, what is happening and how do we get to the point where there seems to be so much discourse with regard to the um, law enforcement, particularly between um, the races. How, how do you view it based from your background? I think perspectively, I look at the situation currently in America to say that we're talking past one another in the conversation. One of the things I do believe is that dialogue brings understanding and commonality. Regardless of what you're hearing in the United States, here are the things that you're not hearing. Mm -hmm. So I am asked, on many occasions when I speak publicly about the issue of defunding the police mm -hmm. and why there might be some different techniques that are going to be used. Mm -hmm. No one's talking about taking murder off the books or rape or robbery, burglary. Someone will have to be there in order to Enforce. effectuate arrest, to enforce the law, and to have a community presence to keep people safe. Just like prosecutors will have the role in bringing those charges and the people People, your peers and the mm -hmm. jury will decide whether or not you're guilty. What to me really begins the conversation is understanding people's perspectives and how do we bring those perspectives together through that dialogue. And to me, coming from law enforcement, where my training was in 1985, right. that training has changed dramatically to crisis intervention techniques in order to get your certification as an mm -hmm. Ohio peace officer, continuing that as part of advanced training. But here are some of the other things. What are we doing for mental health of officers? What are we doing for post-traumatic stress? I can assure you that after a, a career of 25 years on the street, you will have some of those invisible injuries and opening aspects to counseling. And if I'm reading between the lines, you seem to be open to, and I'm using this word um, justice, and I don't mean to be so um, over dramatic, but you seem to be open to that there may be a little bit of a reform or tweaking the way police officers are trained that could help them be better um, stewards of, of, of their responsibility. Ohio's been advancing this model. Um, they have done critical incident training or what I call that crisis intervention training. They have been doing it for a number of years. Yeah. So as they grow that pool of officers who respond to crisis in a moment, but also mental health of the officers along with, in the easiest way to understand it is, imagine if you will that you've just served a tour of duty in Afghanistan yeah. and you've come home and then you're trying to acclimate to life again. Right, Justice. Well, that need mm. to have some mental health, health assistance 
having been a police officer, having gone from a routine day to a heart pounding day to a heart breaking day, yes. holding the hand of a 10 year old who, who was raped as they're going through the rape trauma kit at a hospital, all of those layers of what I call tape of right, those justice. incidents on your life, I, I really believe that as that builds up, we need to address mental health, but mental health of an officer cannot immediately mean the taking of a shield and a gun. Yes, yes. It is only when they're a threat to self or others that they do that. But also I think recognition-wise and speaking to law enforcement agencies, mm -hmm. they share your passion or your community's passion of not allowing what they would say an officer who may not be fit to serve, who really doesn't have the temperament to be a police officer, right. to transfer them on to another department. And, and I will say this, Justice, being a police officer for a guy who did a ride along, and I use that tongue in cheek because it has nothing to do compared to what, you, what officers have go through, it's difficult. Their jobs are extremely, extremely difficult. And I was at a ride along, follow me, Justice, and when you stop and you don't know what's coming to your window, even me sitting in the passenger mm -hmm. seat and the officer says to me, you can come with me. And I have the choice, follow me to chair, Justice. I say, no, I'm okay, I'm gonna sit right here. But they don't have mm -hmm. that choice to knock on that door for that domestic ex that dispute. They don't have that choice mm -hmm. to knock on that door mm -hmm. in terms of rolling down that window. So I applaud not only what you guys do in terms of your past um, police officer, but also what you're doing in terms of the mental aspect of trying to keep them safe as officers of the law. I want to quote something that you said here and, it, and, and, and get a little bit of take on it. It says, believe key to reducing crime is to give hope to young people. The youth is where we need to target to break the cycle of criminal behavior. You have shown apathy and sympathy and you certainly have a background in terms of working with the youth. You believe that the young people are part of how we can um, break down these barriers. I do, because that is the next generation, Jerome. But Think a lot of judges, don't, a lot of people don't hear that from judges in your position. That's because they, Think about life as your experience and how you come. Your beliefs are formed through your parents, through your upbringing, but also your engagement. And think about someone in my position who went from law enforcement to being a private practicing attorney yes. where I represented young yes, people you who were in the justice system. Yes, you and did. my goal was to try to keep them from ever entering the Department of Youth Services because it becomes that gateway into the revolving in, in incarceration. In your practice, from my, 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 my research, you were really an advocate for juvenile crime and helping to support youth. And, and has it been something that stuck with you all these years? Always. I came, my undergraduate degree is in social work, yes. and my internship was at the Hamilton County Juvenile Court, where I was a para probation officer. I was working with teachers in schools who had signed up to really be that mentoring person for someone who was on probation. To me, all of my juvenile offenders shared some key aspects, what I call the breakdown in what we would give um, to children, right. whether that was the security of a household or sustenance, or whether that was an individual who would have a guiding hand and serve as a mentor, help educating. All five of those factors, all Play. of my clients had my biggest role is trying to make sure that they would not become institutionalized because um. all of the research demonstrates that once that first incarceration happens, institutionalization leads, leads to, to more. more. That's and it is a bigger step into the adult system, I, into prison. I think though, having a judge who sits on one of the most powerful courts in the land, the highest Supreme Court, mm -hmm. hearing you say it, it's, it's refreshing to know that institutionalized creates more institutionalized. And I think the viewers out there really appreciate that and I want to say this though justice not to toot the horn but you you're you're highly um, you you and I'm not going to bring into the politics but you won all 88 counties in other words you're respected across demographics across populace whether it's agriculture whether it's urban in that perspective I think can't go un, un, unserved in terms of your your position on the high courts and hearing you talk about this it certainly is refreshing have you always been an advocate of 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 uh, of just opportunities and understanding yes. people's backgrounds. Yes, I think as people, if you want to be a leader, leadership is all about action. And what do you do in those moments when you see a problem? For me, whether I was in private practice, yes. I took the, pro the 
problem solving aspect to reality to write a program. It was called Compass Point for Juvenile Court to offer to those young men and women who were in the system, whether that was as a trial court judge for 14 years, seeing the non-support docket, sh seeing the needs that there are obstacles and barriers and hurdles to employment, that sometimes people just needed help. Working with Jobs and Family Service and partnering a program where we were able to help break down some of those barriers to employment. Because what did we want as a society? For people to care for to their care children for the financially, added. lovingly. The, that, that same thing everybody wants, regardless Absolutely. of demographics, regardless of race. When we come back, we're going to hear, take a break here, we're going to hear from the justice, get a little bit of a different perspective in terms of, of, uh, of race and how it plays in terms of the court system. Don't go away. From early in the morning when the Happy Day stores open, turn the grills on, get the coffee turned on, across town the beer barrels, there's a lot of prep work that has to be done, sauces being prepped on the stove, at Old City Prime everything's from scratch. I think the culture in our company is, is that we care about our people and in return our, our people care about our customers. Thank you so much to all of our team that's worked for us and thank you so much to all the communities that we're in for being such great customers. You are the center of a universe. That's what we've learned in 160 years serving our community. Everybody means the world to someone. So when you're in here, or if someday you find yourself in here, and when all you can think about is the world that revolves around you, we'll be a world that revolves around you too. Mercy Health. Healthcare for the universe of you. We at Lima Pallet Company, thank you Lima. In 1977, we started a small family business and today we continue to grow. Lima Pallet is a full service pallet and crate provider. Every customer is unique, which is why we build pallets and crates to our customer specific requirements. Because we have our own fleet of trucks, we're able to provide customers with on time, same day, and 24 hour emergency deliveries. Coming together is the beginning, keeping it together is progress, and working together is success. Let's continue to succeed. Welcome back to Hello Lima. We've had an interesting discussion with the Justice of the Supreme Court of Ohio, Justice Kennedy. And again, I appreciate you taking some of our questions and getting that perspective to the audience mm -hmm. on who you are as a justice. I'm going to ask you um, a question here that's kind of um, off the beaten path. The Christian Sciences Science Monitor came out with a story yesterday, so it's kind of new, I have to admit. And here's what they said, and I want your take on it. Sometimes we get to the point where we have these shows and we do a lot of yakking, but we don't listen to the professionals, those who have come up, got to the mm -hmm. point where you are, and maybe, maybe get a little bit of a different perspective, and that's what we want to continue to do on Hello Lima. So I'm going to ask you this, Justice. It says in this article, and, and I think the Christian Science Monitor is a pretty good unbiased paper, and it's a, a journalist, and it says, white, black, and white Americans see the justice system differently. And coming from somebody who has... Um, the NAACP in the Cleveland gave you mm -hmm. almost a almost a perfect star rating um, recently. So you certainly are an, a, an advocate. So I, it was great to be able to bounce this question off of you. It said that the research was conducted and said they found that when asked white Americans if the criminal justice system treat blacks fairly, then white 61 percent agree that blacks get treated less fairly in white America. But when they asked black Americans the same question, 87% said the system was unfair. I think the mayor buried the lead, but what it says is close to 78% black, white feel that the justice system is unfair. And some of that justice, you and I were talking mm -hmm. beforehand, it's just dialogue, perception. What do you, how, how, did, how did we get to that point? How does, how does you, that sit in the top court of the land, navigate through those waters where people are coming in automatically feeling angry or feeling that the system is, is tilted um, away from them. I think you have to appreciate their perspective, how they view the system. You have to really, in my view, 
take a look of where that comes from. If you look at the prison population in Ohio right now, 47,000, well, you would say if Ohio has a population of 19% is black, mm -hmm. then there might be a corollary, but there's not. 54% of who's incarcerated right now of that 47 is African American. So that really drives the system. I was just with a group of African American pastors in Cleveland, and really what they feel is there is a disproportionate institutionalization of their community in prison. So some of the things that we have been talking about are what are those tools that we can help break down some of those barriers Barriers. And really, I liken it back to what I was doing when I was um, an attorney in juvenile court or whether I was a trial court judge mm -hmm. and doing the non-support docket and breaking down obstacles and barriers to employment. And to me, there are a couple things that we can do. As a community, what we're going back to and sharing with them is Bridges Out of Poverty. It is a program that's available to them. I've talked to the founders of it. They're willing to sit down with the pastors to talk about how can we integrate this kind of an educational format. As someone said, it's like teaching someone how to fish. How do we educate this kind of format in helping bridge the poverty gap, which also uh, tends to lead, lead to criminal to actions, correct? Yes. How do we also bridge that to get it into the court system? So in Cleveland, Ohio, they have a drug court system. How do you make that a second part of that? It, it, if I can make you clean and sober, yeah. but you don't have a job. It, it defeats the purpose. Exactly. I, I, I don't want to lose the thought here in terms of going back justice. It seemed to be, and you're one of the few, what I call, position elected officials who said that I don't need the questions ahead of time. In other words, you sat down here and we started talking right off the bat. You had no indication of what was coming. How were you able to roll those stats off so fluid in terms of, it sounds like you know the stats in terms of African American incarceration. You know the stats of that is that I, I find that refreshing. Well, I, when you have these conversations across Ohio. This isn't new to you. No. These conversations. No. And we've been having these conversations. Take a look at Lima. Look at what you're doing in your criminal justice system from drug courts to mental health courts right. to right veterans justice. courts, but to reentry courts. Yes. Look at the restorative justice that you're doing to the life to redeemed me. right here in Lima, whether they're able to get a job at Lima Palette or right. one of the restaurants here right. where they're taking formerly incarcerated individuals. Right. There is my mother would say, in every saint there was a sinner. I follow you. Should in justice. every sinner there is a saint. And Justice, some of your, that, that is an excellent quote, some of your passion has been reentry citizens, those who, mm -hmm. have, who have strayed. So not only are you working to keep them from being incarcerated and institutionalized, you're an advocate for helping them once they get back into the system. Absolutely. If you are not looking at the person holistically as a human being and how can you better their condition, how can, we con how can you better a community condition if you don't care about the one? So for me, when you take a look at what Lima is doing with reentry, as I have talked to the pastors mm -hmm. in Cleveland, here you have this shifting of individuals. Um, How do you help them bridge the gap? So going back to my trial court days, mm -hmm. some of the individuals who were not paying support couldn't get a job because they had a felony on their record. Partnering them with employers, partnering them with agencies that help formerly incarcerated felons obtain employment, there is a life after that. It is a struggle. But until we start recognizing it and start making that divide, and it goes with substance abuse. I don't believe substance abuse is the core. Mm -hmm. Substance abuse may be why I'm seeing you right now in front of in, me in, on in the bench, you, right? but something else is driving this. So you do see that person that's standing in for, in before you in a, in a different light. At least you have, the, you have the ability to see that person differently. They are all people. How do you get to the point where you're recognizing that you can make an impact in that person's life before you send them away. And, and your job isn't to obviously make laws, you uphold the law, and I know that makes it even tougher, but you seem to balance it pretty well. Well, I think for, tr at the Supreme Court, you know, we're the appellate yes. district. So my opportunity to do these types of things is 
limit it to education and sharing, which is part of that Lean Forward initiative that I do. Mm -hmm. But part of it is also understanding where we come from to, to have the broader conversation to help judges. So. It is trial court judges across Ohio who do the work of the justice system. They are the backbone. And it is the men and women who take the bench every day and not give up to believe that you can help shape the life of someone to make them to make. productive. And it's having those tools <clears throat> and continuing that. As a trial court judge, <clears throat> when you're looking at a pre-sentence investigation, mm -hmm. and let's say you're the judge right. and now you're deciding, right. what am I going to try for this individual? What right. are the tools in my tool that best? You have available. Exactly. What can I help them with to improve their condition? Most individuals are going to be on community control, so they're going right. to be on a term of probation. They're not going to be incarcerated. So how do we help keep them from coming back, coming to, back the into system? the system? That is fascinating. We're going to take another quick break and then we're going to wrap things up. And I hope you stick around because what you're hearing from the justice, I think it surprised not only me who I think done my research, but many of our viewers also. Thank Don't you. go away. You are the center of a universe. That's what we've learned in 160 years serving our community. Everybody means the world to someone. So when you're in here, or if someday you find yourself in here, and when all you can think about is the world that revolves around you, we'll be a world that revolves around you too. Mercy Health, healthcare for the universe of you. From early in the morning when the Happy Day stores open, turn the grills on, get the coffee turned on, across town the beer barrels, there's a lot of prep work that has to be done. Sauces being prepped on the stove, at Old City Prime, everything's from scratch. I think the culture in our company is, is that we care about our people, and in return our, our people care about our customers. Thank you so much to all of our team that's worked for us, and thank you so much to all the communities that we're in for being such great customers. Our barbers and cosmetologists are licensed professionals who specialize in all phases of hair. Whether you are getting a lineup, cut, beard trim, or a design, our barbers will help create your unique style. With full-time cosmetologists, also taking appointments and walk-ins from lashes, presses, color, wax to braids, and weaves, Fresh and Faded cosmetologists do it all. Call us for an appointment today. Fresh and Faded Unisex Hair Studio, the largest shop in Northwest Ohio. 419-221-FADE. If you ain't fresh, you ain't faded. Welcome back. We're going to wrap things up here with the Justice of the High Supreme Court. And again, appreciate you being in the lovely town of Lima discussing some topics with us. And I'm going to go back to, because I think it's important for us to get a sense of, uh, of, of who you are. You've been um, supported and endorsed mm -hmm. and, uh, by all walks, from the Paternal Order of Pleas to the Construction, Builders and Trade, the Farm Bureau and Social Federation, NAACP out of Cleveland. Um, incarcerated individuals, you, as I would like to say, run the gamut in terms of, of comfort level by a wide array of, of, of organizations and groups. How, do you get, how did you get to that level of, 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 of comfort by so many um, groups? I think, it's, again? I think it's the conversation. So in all of those conversations, they ask you who you are as a person. And I want to stop you here because you quoted your mom. I'm going to quote mine, which means you can tell a lot by an individual, by the people they hang around with. You hang around with some, some, some good people, which has to say something to your character. That's the point I want to make. Go well, ahead. Thank you for that. I think they also look at background, but what are you going to do with you know, the power that you have. So for the, for, for the first time ever, because I have the title of justice, somebody's actually gonna call you yes. back. Somebody's gonna actually say, justice, what can I do? What yes. can I help you with? 
And for me, that power is always about why are they in need? Why are they calling you? Oh. So for instance, um, some disabled American veterans came to my office and they were very- it's Something that you're an advocate of. You started programs for vets. Go ahead. Dr. So the disabled American veterans were upset because they believe that the United States Supreme Court statement about how disability benefits work for wounded veterans, okay. veterans wounded in combat, that those are not property rights that are divided at the time of divorce. And they were right. The United States Supreme Court spoke on it 10 years ago and spoke on it again in April or May of 2017. Mm -hmm. And what they wanted me to do is do an educational program for domestic relations court judges in Ohio that really talk about here's the federal statute, here's the Supreme Court rulings, mm -hmm. while disability benefits can be used to calculate child support and spousal support, they are not property rights where you get to divide that money in half. So they saw a problem, they came to me, and I just listened. And when they finished, I actually said, this is something that I think I can do. If it was something that I didn't think I could do because they wanted an aspect of law change, right. I referred them to, to the local congressman the local and their U.S. senator. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's being willing to pick up that phone. Did that spearhead the Lean Forward initiative that you've, you've, you've started? Well, Lean Forward was really begun by retired Justice Evelyn Lundberg Stratton. Oh, Justice I Stratton. That name left the bench in December of 12 when I was coming to the bench mm -hmm. and one of the things she asked me to take over was the Lean Forward initiative. Now she called it Veterans Treatment Courts then. We've used the Lean Forward tag because it's a military term. Okay. Military members lean forward. They lean forward into the challenges on the battlefield. They lean forward into the problems and obstacles that they face. They find solutions by leaning forward, okay. never back. That initiative, that tagline came because I had a staff attorney who was in the Marine Corps who was a staff attorney for me while he was a reservist. Mm -hmm. And he was the one who helped me with the disabled American veterans. Um, James Kresge, Captain Kresge. Mm -hmm. So as a result of Eve's partnership and James's partnership, we really looked at Lean Forward and how do we train judges to understand what's available? Imagine you've come home from that tour of duty right. and imagine at that time you're suffering from the invisible yes. wounds of war. Yes traumatic brain injury, yes. post-traumatic stress. You are now self-medicating as a result of your depression. We find you in the justice system. Sometimes we're finding you too late because they're not admitting. Right. So I went on a tour of Ohio to those counties that don't have veterans treatment. And I wasn't trying to sell them on a specialty docket, but I was trying to get them to buy into understanding okay. the aspects of what's happening, what's happening across Ohio and how you bridge that gap. How do you put services into the court? Well, the federal system has already gotten it there for you. So at the VA, there are Veterans Justice Outreach Correct. Workers. The only thing they're there for is it's to connect with you as a judge or a probation officer or a sheriff's department to do the outreach to find veterans, veterans in the criminal justice system so that when they are released on community control or released on parole, they holistically come home. Come home. Housing, sustenance, training, education, they paid for these services as a result of their service to us. Well, that is fascinating, and I tell you, the veterans, the way they're treated can get better, and I'm, I applaud you for Thank helping you. the most um, patriotic in, our, in, 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 in the country as veterans continue to fight the struggles when they come back home. Again, we'd like to thank a lot of appreciation to having the justice join us today. Some tough questions we gave the justice and she was able to answer them. And at the end of the day, being able to sit down and have that kind of a dialogue helps us all. So we appreciate your time. Tune in to Hello Lima. Follow us on Facebook. And thank you. Hello Lima, brought to you by Good Food Restaurant, home of Happy Days, Beer Barrel, and Old City Prime. Also by Mercy Health Partners, 318 Restaurant and Bar, Lima Palette Company, and Fresh and Faded Hair Studios.